Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to chapter two, lesson one of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. In this lesson, there are four activities, but we are going to be skipping activity two. So let's get started. So in our previous chapter, we learned about how the animals aren't growing and thriving because there aren't enough plants in the project area. Now, let's focus on what's happening with the Cercopia trees. Natural Resources Rescue received our first rainforest restoration plans and sent us new data about the current condition of the rainforest. The new data includes photographs of the project area and a healthy rainforest for us to compare. So we have our images from the Costa Rican Rainforest Restoration Project report. On our left side, we have our project area and on the right side, we have an image of a healthy rainforest. On the left in our project area, I notice a lot of brown, it's a lot of dirt, very little green. Trees seem to be fallen or cut down in that picture and it doesn't look much like a rainforest. On the right in our healthy rainforest image, I see a lot of green, a lot of leaves, a lot of trees, and some big clouds rolling in. So now what I want you to do is to compare and contrast the project area with the healthy rainforest. What do you notice? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question. The researchers from Natural Resources Rescue collected this data. They measure trees in a healthy part of the rainforest and in the project area. So if we look at it, it says data about cercopia trees. We have our number of tr cercopia trees, average height of the trees, and average width of the leaves. We have it in our project area and in our healthy rainforest. So if we look at our project area, we have 188 cercopia trees. They are four meters in height or 13 feet, and they have an average width of 0.1 meters or 0.3 feet in their leaves. The healthy rainforest has 596 cercopia trees. The average height of the tree is 12 meters or 40 feet, and the average width of the leaves is 0.3 meters or one foot. So now question two, what ideas do you have about this data? Again, to answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet, a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video to do this now. Looking at our natural resources rescue, it's we have a project goal for the restoration of the project area. This was sent by the Natural Resources Rescue, and it says, restore this section of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem and improve its health. Your tasks are to number one, investigate why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving in the project area, and two, create a rainforest restoration plan. You're going to write an argument about why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving, and you're going to suggest an action step to restore the rainforest. So these are our goals for this chapter. What we are going to be focusing on for chapter two is this question. Why aren't the cercopia trees growing and thriving? This is a question we want to be able to answer once we are all done with chapter two. So we are not trying to answer this yet. This is a question we're keeping in mind until the end of chapter two. Since activity three is a simulation, we are going to do this in the next video. Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson one of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. We just completed activity one and we are skipping activity two. So we are going to continue with activity three. So we are going to begin investigating where the food molecules for plants come from. Before we begin our simulation, I want you to answer this question. Why do you think that some plants grow more than others? 
You can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet, a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about the answer in your head. To answer this question, pause the video now. Another question I want you to answer is, where do you think the plants might be getting their food molecules? Again, to answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet or in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video to answer this question. So since we cannot directly observe where plants get their food molecules, we can use a model to try to figure it out. In this lesson, we are going to use the sim to explore where plants get their food molecules. Remember, matter is made of molecules. The cubes in the sim represent the matter of the organism's bodies. We are going to try removing different components of the ecosystem one at a time to see what happens to the plants. You'll use the sim to answer the questions. You can either continue with this video or access the sim through Amplify. You are also going to be using page 34 in your ecosystem restoration workbook or page four in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet. To get on to the Amplify simulation, you are going to log on to Amplify. You are going to scroll down to the ecosystem restoration unit, and then you are gonna click on the orange box one to access the simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so as we can see, we have a couple different things going on with the simulation. We have plants over here, we have rabbits, we have mushrooms, and we have wolves. We can also see that the cubes represent the matter. Triangles are nutrients. We can see those in the soil as well as water. We can also see carbon dioxide or these gray diamonds that are in the air, and our sun represents our energy. So as I'm observing, I can see that the sun is giving plants energy then those molecules seem to be moving to the rabbits or back into the soil. The rabbits are then getting that energy. And then the rabbit's energy is either going to go to the wolves or if the rabbit dies, they are going to go to the mushrooms. So I wonder what happens if I remove the rabbits from my ecosystem and let's watch. So as I'm watching, I notice that there's a couple different things happening. There is a lot of matter being given off by the wolves and the mushrooms. I can also see some given off by the plants. Okay, now I notice that there's a little, there's less matter being given off by the wolves and more to the mushrooms and the plants. Let's continue watching to see what happens. Okay, I can start to see that the wolves are starting to look a little droopy. Maybe this represents that they're dying because they don't have any rabbits to eat. So I wonder what happens if I put the rabbits back and then remove the plants from the ecosystem. Oh, if you saw that, I just saw the wolves. They just started to perk up. So I'm assuming that they eat the rabbits. Now if we look at this, the rabbits are starting to get droopy because they have nothing to eat now. So let's add the plants back and see what happens if I remove the mushrooms. It looks like by removing the mushrooms, the plants start to get droopy. It looks like they're starting to die out. So let, and, oh, and so are the rabbits. So let's add those back and let's see what happens if I remove the wolves from the ecosystem. So again, remember that the cubes represent matter. The sun is giving off energy. Let's 
see. It looks like without the wolves. Oh, the rabbits just started to get more perky. Let's continue watching. Okay, I can see that the amount of cubes in the mushroom area is starting to get really big. Remember, this is matter. So the mushrooms are have a lot more matter than the other two categories. So I'm going to add the wolves back for just a few more moments and see if it starts to do anything new. I also notice in the soil by the plants, I see roots which is how plants get their water and nutrients. Okay, we are going to stop the simulation there. Okay, now that we have watched the simulation and made some observations, you are going to answer the questions in page 34 of your ecosystem restoration workbook or you are going to answer the same questions in page four of your chapter two, lesson one activity workbook. And that will end activity three. Hello, fifth graders. Welcome back to chapter two, lesson one of our ecosystem restoration unit. This video is going to be for activity four. So let's get started. We've been exploring the sim to observe where plants get food matter. If you missed the simulation or you forgot, go back to the video with activity three. Before we move on, we're going to answer the question, what is matter? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet, a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and answer question six. So we're going to be looking at balloons. This balloon has water that has filled the space. So you can see by the squeeze that the balloon takes the shape of the squeeze and then bounces back when it is released. Now this balloon has air that has filled the space. So it kind of is doing the same thing. When it's squeezed, it takes the shape of the squeeze and then it bounces back when you let it go. Particles of matter and air are free to move around in space, which is why the balloon changes shape when I squeeze it. Now this balloon I tried to fill with light, and this is what happened. So keeping these three balloons in mind, we're going to look at question seven. Do you think water is made of matter? Do you think air is made of matter? Do you think sunlight is made of matter? These are yes or no questions, but I also want you to think why you think what you think. So why do you think water is made of matter or not? Why do you think air is made of matter or not? And why do you think sunlight is made of matter or not? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video now and answer this question. Okay, so now let's look at our matter chart that we have been filling out. So we can see that for matter, it starts with an atom, which is our smallest thing that everything is made out of. Then one or two or more atoms combined creates a molecule and molecules make up matter. So animals are made up of matter, plants are made up of matter. Now which of the three things we just investigated should be added to the matter chart and which should not be added? So remember we're keeping in mind that we are looking at water, air, and sunlight. So which one of those three things should be added to the matter chart and which should not be added? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson one activity packet. In a notebook, you can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. To answer this question, pause the video. So I will 
go ahead and add air and water to our chart. So these things are made up of matter. There are molecules that make up water and there are molecules that make up air, same as plants and animals. I am not adding sunlight because sunlight is not made up of molecules. This is the end of our chapter two, lesson one. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you on lesson two.